Royden Lepp, thank you for a twenty dollars super chat. Then we're gonna we're gonna we we still have like five more super chats. You guys keep as long as you guys keep feeding the super chats, I'll keep answering them. I apologize to the folks who are leaving regular questions. I do want to get back to you before the end of the stream, but I gotta I obviously give the super chats priority. Royden Lepp, thank you for a twenty dollars super chat. Thanks for helping me via email last month. I discovered that Betaflight four four base two and gives me horrible oscillations on the bench. When I went back to four one, everything was smooth. Um, the number one reason I would say for that Royden Lepp is if you did not load the correct RC link preset. So Betaflight four four is a lot more aggressive in how it filters the RC command, the RC the input from your controller. And if you're doing a high speed control link like Express LRS at 250 hertz, 500 hertz, 1000 hertz, you have to load the correct RC link preset in the Betaflight presets tab. If you don't let do that, you you don't always get horribly noisy ground grumbly motors, but you often do. Argyle Sky, thank you for a five dollar super chat. Does the M10 GPS chip work with Betaflight 42X and below? My quads are tuned great. I don't want to upgrade the firmware. Um, Argyle Sky, only Betaflight 4.4 has support for the auto configuration of the M10 chips. And Betaflight 4.4 is buggy and doesn't work. So actually only Betaflight 4.5 will fully support auto configuration of the M10 chips. If you download uCenter and manually configure the chip then you can use it with any version of Betaflight you want. It's just the auto configuration that is missing, and it is missing. Drano Drones, thank you for a $2 super chat. Just wanted to say, looking good in the Bardwell shirt. Yeah, this is my FPV Lux t-shirt. I don't wear this. I don't. I think it's a little bit uh, corny to wear a shirt with your own face on it, but I thought just today. I like. I actually like the shirt. Just don't wear it a lot because I think it's a little corny. JC Cantrell, thank you for a four dollar super chat. Appreciate your generosity, JC. Did JC have a question? I don't think so. Uh, Saiyan FPV, science Super Saiyan. I have a Happy Model EP2 which connects to the Boxer but not Betaflight. Everything's updated. RX is to TX. Tried on Goku F405 and Mob F7. Even tried multiple UARTs. Thanks for a five dollar super chat, Saiyan. The first thing I would check is what is the LED on the receiver doing. For example, a common mistake that people make is to enable model match. And if you enable model match, but you don't set model match up correctly, then you'll get this situation. If that's the case, the, the LED will be blinking. I think it's a triple blink, but I'm not 100% sure. It basically, if the LED on the receiver is not solid, then you have some, uh, that that's probably a problem that, you have a problem in the Express LRS system. So check that the LED is solid. If the LED is doing a triple blink, then go into your Lua script and turn off model match. Prop Spalter, thank you for five Swiss francs. Uh, making sure here. That does not seem like there is a question. Just th So thank you for the donation. Uh, Steve-O88, thank you for a $5 super chat. Where can I go to learn setting up my five inch quad to give my V2 goggles, jumper T pro controller to Betaflight and learn how to tune also? It's my first build. Uh, that's a tall order, Steve-O. I mean, I have videos about a lot of that stuff. Um, like my, I have a build series that I did with GetFPV and you could watch that and see the approximate things you have to do, but it's not going to help you with your exact build because it's not your hardware. Um, if you want to pay Blunty, he'll get on the phone with you uh, for an hourly rate. He has a fee for one-on-one -on -one calls and he'll walk you through it and show you how to do it. Blunty, is that fair to say? I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, no, that's absolutely correct. The like only I know, thing I don't really do is yeah. tuning, but we can I can explain like what PIDs and filters are, why you might want to set some, and explain some helpful presets, you know, but yeah. I just don't dig into tuning. It's pretty difficult to tune remotely because tuning is kind of a real-time thing. It's not that it can't be done, but as far as getting the quad set up and configured, and, and I believe like it's not just like Blunty that you will... You, I mean, if he, he wants you to just do it for him remotely, I assume you would. But if he wants you to kind of teach him and walk him through it, you're, you're also good at that. Yeah, I would just say that's probably the best application. I'm happy to also do it for you, like you said. But um, I think people learn the most when, like, I'm kind of walking them through it. And then we can learn what each tab does and why you might go there and what the settings do and that yeah. sort of thing. 
Okay. So the that website is www.itsblunty, I-T-S-B-L-U-N-T-Y, itsblunty.com. And there's a there's a page there. Or if you are on Discord and can, can talk to Blunty on Discord, you can arrange it there. Um, obviously, I, I can also just link you to 100 videos. But it sounds like from the nature of your question that you want someone to help you with your specific quad. And I probably don't have a video for your exact hardware. Um, JC Cantrell had a super chat. It wasn't connected, though. Don't know why. Uh, the question is, Radio Master ELRS modules like the Ranger and Micro. The Ranger is easy to set the TX at 1 watt. My Micro module is TX at 100 milliwatt. How to config the Micro or edit the Lua scripts. Um, JC they should both, do they both, I think they both support one watt. So I don't see, that should be, I should be exactly the same. Uh, if your Express LRS module is locked to 100 milliwatts, doesn't that mean that it's been set to, to EU mode? I think that's what it means. Is Captain Bry still in the chat? Stardust FPV says yes. JC, my guess is that you have accidentally flashed the micro module with F with EU mode, and you need to reflash it with FCC region. Yay, Captain Bry is there. He agrees. I always feel so smart when I say something and Captain Bry says I'm right. <laughs> yeah, so JC, reflash that and make sure it's set to FCC region. Tyler gets a, thank you for a $5 super chat. Cadix is advertising a Walksnail avatar plus Cinelog 2.0 combo for 800 bucks. This makes the avatar approximately $169 off. Is this worth it or just go DJI? Um, so here's what I would say, Tyler. $169 is not enough money to make you pick the video system that you don't really want. Okay, if you think about it, $169 is approximately one VTX. So how many VTXs are you going to buy over the, let's say, four, four years on average that you're going to own this system? Oh, probably a lot. So if, if you decide that Walksnail is the system that you want, then take this, enjoy your free VTX and have a great time. But if you really want DJI, if you've looked at all of the parameters and decided DJI is the right one for you, don't buy the wrong one just because it's $169 off. If you're on the, uh, both of the systems are good and anyone could use either of the systems as their daily driver. There are ways in which the O3 is better. There are ways in which the walk snail is better. I would say that that the price difference alone wouldn't be enough to sway me. If it was $500, maybe it would be enough to sway me. But for $169, bucks, to me, that wouldn't sway me. 